By the early 20th century, new urban megacities around America are bursting to the seams and look to expand in a new direction, up. But building these great towers demands a critical ingredient that's much too expensive. Steel. One man will change all that, and with it, the face of America. He'll risk everything and almost lose it all. It's 1872 and Andrew Carnegie, a five foot three Scottish immigrant iron millionaire, is in Sheffield, England. He's looking at the future, a revolutionary way to make steel. Steel has been around for thousands of years, but so expensive to produce, it's always been a luxury item. 2,000 years ago, it's used in oriental swords. It is even used in designer jewelry. But America stands at the brink of a new age. To build it, they need steel, and lots of it. It's the only material strong enough for the towers that will touch the sky. An English bullet maker is showing Carnegie a new but simple method of producing steel. He's stunned. Blast hot air through molten iron. Carbon impurities burn off. You get the wonder material. Steel. For the first time, it can be produced quickly and inexpensively. If Carnegie can use this Bessemer process to mass produce it, he'll own the future. Carnegie returns to the States, to Pittsburgh, to start building the biggest steel plant in the world. It'll be larger than 80 football fields. It's a massive gamble. Carnegie risks everything he's got on the new plant. But only months into construction, disaster a catastrophic stock market collapse. The economy is in freefall. He has to borrow even more money and barely scrapes through. August 1875. Against all odds, Carnegie's giant furnaces are ready to test. Steel production is phenomenally dangerous. Inside, five tons of molten metal. 3,000 degrees. Hot enough to vaporize a man in seconds. If it works, it will make Carnegie one of the richest men in the world. But there's a lot more at stake. Skyscrapers, cars, washing machines, aeroplanes, even space travel. None of it can happen if steel can't be mass-produced. Carnegie is the first ever to mass produce steel. Prices plummet by over 80%. Output rockets from a few thousand tons in 1860 to 11 million by 1900. So many American stories of success uh, are diligence, uh, perseverance, but there's an awful lot of luck involved too. His timing couldn't have been better. It was steel that built American cities. It was steel that built American railroads. It was steel that built American shipping. 
by the beginning of the 20th century, he was one of the wealthiest men in America. Pittsburgh transforms from a sleepy town to the industrial heart of the nation. Its population triples. Driven by a new steel railroad, millions of tons of steel are transported across America. The raw material to build the modern city.